But for many people looking at energy policy in the U.S., chickens are the least of their concerns. The Environmental Protection Agency is up in arms over the State Department's latest review of the Keystone XL oil pipeline, which would transport 830,000 barrels of oil to Texas refineries from the oil sands of Alberta, Canada. Now, a State Department report from February downplayed the environmental concerns of the project, saying that the pipeline would not have an impact on the greenhouse effect. But because because the State Department has the final say on Keystone, the report suggests that the project would get the green light from the Obama administration. However, the EPA called, calls this report insufficient. Now, the Environmental Agency recommended that the State Department take a closer look at the effect of the greenhouse gas emissions from, from the extraction of the tar sands before continuing with the Keystone project. Um, for more on this, I'm joined by Jamie Henn, Communications Director at 350. Dot org. Jamie, tell me more about this EPA statement. Well, good to be with you. You know, this EPA statement is a big black eye for the State Department and a big blow to the Keystone XL pipeline. The EPA basically reaffirmed what environmental groups and scientists have been saying for a long time, that this pipeline is dangerous because it's guaranteed to spill over some of America's richest farmland and most important fresh water that it will cause massive amounts of pollution in refinery communities, which are already bearing the brunt of the fossil fuel industry's dirty energy. And third, that it will have a big impact on our climate. The State Department's been trying to argue that it doesn't matter whether or not we build this pipeline, that that tar sands will be developed anyways. The EPA went back and said, look, that isn't true. This pipeline is a critical piece of infrastructure, and if it's built, it will have a big negative impact on our climate. I see, Jamie. So you mentioned water. Uh, what impact could this crude have on the waterways? You know, how is it going to affect this valuable asset and others as it travels down? Well, we've seen a little bit of that in Mayflower, Arkansas, where Exxon just had its big spill. And we saw even more of it a couple years ago in Kalamazoo, Michigan, when a different tar sands pipeline spilled uh, hundreds of thousands of gallons of oil into the Kalamazoo River. The Keystone XL pipeline would run over to one of our largest sources of fresh drinking water in the United States, the Ogallala Aquifer. A spill there would be like a BP disaster on land. It would be absolutely devastating not only for farmers and ranchers along the pipeline route, but for the entire Midwest region that depends on that water and depends on that land uh, for a lot of farming and a lot of jobs. So as we've been saying all along and as farmers and ranchers have been saying in Nebraska, this pipeline really is just all risk and no reward. So it's good to see the EPA coming on board with that, and it's a, uh, putting some wind in the sails of pipeline opponents. I see. So for environmentalists, the EPA statement, it sounds like a good thing. Uh, but the decision is, of course, still in the hands of the State Department. How much of this uh, is going to have an effect on the ultimate decision over whether they ultimately okay the project or not? Well, I think we'll have a fairly large effect. What happens now is that the State Department will be going back to finalize its environmental review on, or supplemental environmental review on the pipeline. It then goes into what's called a national interest determination phase, where it tries to look at all the different factors around this pipeline and determine whether or not they should recommend to President Obama to approve it. Let's remember, the ultimate decision is on President Obama's desk. He needs to take what the EPA and the State Department and other agencies have been telling him, and ideally what the American people have been telling him, and make a decision on this pipeline. Over the last few weeks, environmental groups and average Americans have sent over a million comments to the State Department opposing this project. Uh, now it's up to President Obama to choose whether or not he's going to side with big oil and with the companies pushing this dirty project or with the American people who I think have made it pretty clear that they don't want this pipeline to be built. I see. So, Jamie, there's certainly been a debate in this country over whether this pipeline is going to have a positive or a negative impact on both the local economies and the national economy. Is it going to affect either? Well, I think that's debatable. You know, when we've looked actually into the numbers in terms of the jobs that would be created by this pipeline, it looks about 35 permanent jobs would be created. You know, that's something that would be good in some ways, but the risk from the project is so much larger than that, both in terms of what it could do if the pipeline ruptures, like what we saw in Mayflower, Arkansas, or just what the impact of climate change that this pipeline would worsen continue to have in the American economy. So I think there's a pretty clear case to be made that despite the few jobs this pipeline would create, we have so much more potential to move towards clean energy and create more jobs and renewable energies. So Keystone's, uh, all the risk pipeline 
So Keystone's creation, you know, the argument was for domestic oil prices going down. Could we see domestic oil prices, in fact, rise even with Keystone's creation? Is that a possibility? Yes. Yeah. That's exactly right. The interesting thing about Keystone is it's mostly for export. That's why they're so desperate to get this oil down to the Gulf of Mexico so they can sell it overseas. What that will do is drive up the price of oil all along the pipeline route, including in the Midwest, where a lot of oil is refined. So you're exactly right. People in the Midwest could actually see their gas prices go up if Keystone was built rather than go down. So this argument that it's good for gas prices or good for energy security is completely bogus. It's good for neither. So is Keystone really going to impact our dependence on foreign oil, do you think? Well, if anything, it keeps us hooked on oil instead of really putting money toward the types of solutions that could get us off oil and really solve that problem. Look, this oil is designed to go to the international market, and the price of oil is set there. So Thank building you. more pipelines won't really do much to achieve that goal. The real way to do it is to move towards clean energy. Jamie, we have to leave it there. Thank you. That was Jamie Henn, Communications Director at 350.org.